Hello everybody! One of the top questions I get asked is how much radiators I really need in my system. And people send me the power supply models and SSD models and all other irrelevant information when the only thing we need to know what will fit in your case and also how many hot components you're running, such as CPU and GPU. And math is really simple. You have CPU and GPU configuration, two components, and dual radiator will work for you just fine. If you want a little bit quieter system, you might step up one step to the triple and slow down your fans because you're losing performance. But the question is, what you really gain if you start adding more and more beyond the standard recommendation? So what we're going to test today, I have my system which has two components. Also, I also what are cool motherboard, it's produced such a little heat that it can be ignored, so it doesn't matter. Memory or motherboard doesn't really change your results much. So we only care about CPU, which I have 4670 clock to 4.5 gigahertz. And I have NVIDIA 770, which also overclock a little bit. And we're going to run this system, which is supposed to be just fine with dual radiator in all conditions but we will start also testing it with triple and with quad. For all tests, I will using my dark side LP series radiator. So we have the same model with the same FPI and thickness. We just keep increasing number of cores. So we have 480, as I said, I have my 360 and uh, 240, which is, should be what we actually supposed to use in this particular computer. Another thing that I'm going to test is three different fan speeds because everybody has their own level of comfort. I usually run my own fans around 1500 RPMs because this is fine for me for noise levels and usually satisfies me for performance. But I know there's a lot of people who likes really low speeds. So we're going to test 1100 and also we're going to test uh, high performance a type of oriented crowd and we will run uh, fans on 2000 rpms as well so three samples and three different speeds the more air we're going pushing through data the better results we're supposed to get and we're going to see what kind of difference in temperatures we will getting i use aida program which we, i stressed in two different ways one test I did was I just stress CPU only and in my mind it represents some sort of light gaming or some sort of activities that you go through your system so system loaded but not to the like really heavy result a type of application or use and second I also use worst case scenario when I max both CPU and GPU at 100% and that represent worst Im almost impossible scenario when you're gaming and everything like cramped uh, to the maximum or maybe you making some videos and even then uh, it never happened 100 percent i always try to monitor what's happening when i do my after after effects or or rendering my video it's never 100 it's always 90 something um, on both so it's uh, burn test that we did is absolutely worse so you can't get any more heat from your system than that and we'll see what the difference in temperatures uh, we're getting when we start switching between different speeds of fans and different size of radiators. I, te I, I clocked um, temperatures for four cores. I have four core CPU. So I recorded average temperature that one number for all four cores. So the graphs you will see, they will be delta between uh, room temperature and actual temperature. So we see certain numbers, but if you want to know what exactly cores uh, actual temperature was, just add 20 degrees and that will be your result. Now, talking about results, first test, I clock my fans really slow, 1100 RPMs, and I switch between dual to triple and finally to the quad to see how much actual performance I get gaining more and more radiators power in my system. To my big surprise, all I get from putting twice as more expensive, twice as big radiator in my system was just two degrees. That's really, I, I didn't expect that. I would expect Delta maybe five degrees between big ones and uh, small radiators, but it's not only two. So I thought, okay, fine. Maybe I should crank my fans a little bit more. And what will happen with 1500 RPM speed? Well, the Delta a little bit widened 
between 33 and 29 degrees but it still it was really really small and finally I put it all the way to 2000 and again the delta again widened a little bit but it wasn't the shattering result at all so which means that basically if you don't really load your system heavily going beyond a recommended level such as dual radiator for this particular system it's absolutely stupid waste of money if you want it for um, design purposes fine but it buys you almost nothing let's go for the next step and see what's going to happen if we start pushing system a little bit more in serious way so we're either gaming like crazy people and, and high settings or we feel really artistic and produce complicated video and special effect and our system which utilize both cpu and gpu so i close both and scale down my fans again to 1100 rpm and start switching between radiators this time results was much more comforting we got great 10 degrees between dual and quad radiator this is something that definitely worth looking at and then i get really curious if we get even wider difference if we start putting fans and a high speed and 1500 it's actually shrink and when i put it to the even higher level which was a 2000 degrees we can see that delta between the top and lower levels of radiators shrink to six degrees so guys that's your numbers i hope it help you out and give you a little bit better understanding uh, what you actually get in terms of actual numbers not just generally speaking we get bigger radiator and it's better now you can see how many actual degrees difference between this and that scenario type of um, configurations i will continue to test and see other things such as push pull and things like this and we'll see what uh, actual result we get out of that thank you for watching and see you soon with more videos on this subject